the Anzac tradition is in tatters, the AUKUS deal violates our sovereignty, and it's all about racism. These are some of the views of John Tamahere, President of Te Pāti Māori, the Māori Party in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I spoke to John today about the AUKUS deal and some of the issues involved. Before we get underway, I just would like to say that I'm recording this on stolen Jagera Turbul land, and all around the world we pledge ourselves to Indigenous solidarity. Also, if you do like the work that we do, please become a supporter of Green Left. It makes a huge difference to the work that we're able to do, and it's the best way to get the content that we produce. As I said, I spoke to John today, and I asked him to report, what is the latest on this push to get New Zealand to join the AUKUS deal, and what is the attitude of Te Pāti Māori to this? Um, in terms of the ANZAC tradition, uh, that's in tatters, okay? That is historical. Uh, there was no doubt that there was great licence for it when our, when our people fought side by side uh, in the Boer War, First World War, the Second World War, Korean War, Vietnamese War, uh, and there was um, undoubted comradery uh, because uh, both Kiwis and uh, Aussies have a deep reverence for POMs and, uh, and, and English leadership. Where, where Australia has uh, more flow in our view is that you've become the 51st state of the United States of America without any conversation with the indigenous people of uh, Australia or indeed with your um, partners uh, in your geopolitical environment called Aotearoa New Zealand. And so the day that you continue to embark uh, on putting your trailer on um, policy frameworks led out of Washington means that you're, you're no longer a sovereign people. You're, you're now part of somebody else's conversation. We brought in our nuclear-free legislation in 1987. Uh, your nuclear submarines, your uh, nuclear-fired anything are unwelcome in our waters. So the day that the, uh, your leadership determined to buy uh, nuclear-powered submarines, which will be nuclear-deployed and nuclear-armed. Why, why would you buy these things uh, merely to go investigating how good your fishing stock are? Nothing to do with that. No negotiation, no discussion with Aotearoa New Zealand, and yet we're, we're um, in close proximity with you, but thank the Lord we've got our own sovereignty. So the party Māori is totally opposed to a number of things. Firstly, uh, we want uh, to have a national conversation about re-seizing our sovereignty and ending uh, the crown uh, from King Charles being head of our constitution. It's an anathema to us. They have nothing in common with us, okay, apart from some historical baggage. And the crown is a is a symbol of uh, rape, theft, and pillage uh, on Indigenous peoples around the world. It's wealth. They call it the Commonwealth. It was not the Commonwealth. It's the wealth of the English crown that, that benefit, plus all that hierarchy around it. So we, we have no truck for it anymore. We've grown up. Okay? And so, so when you think that thing through, we want to seize back our own sovereignty. We're going to have that conversation. Uh, there's a young, vibrant generation of under 40-year-olds uh, in both countries, Australia and, and Aotearoa, that are having that conversation amongst themselves now. And so we, so so then you dial dial forward to, well, what shapes your foreign policy? What 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 shapes your military views of yourself? Well, surely it must be uh, that you are a country that shares. Oceania and Southeast Asia. You're not a European country, for goodness sakes. And you've got obligations, duties, and responsibilities to Indigenous people everywhere, including your own. So, so AUKUS is an anathema to us, and in our policy, which we've just released coming into our own election, which occurs on the 14th of October, um, and we are the kingmakers in terms of our MMP politics, so uh, in the last 12 polls, the Māori Party will determine who rules. And part of our bottom line is uh, the issue of a new conversation on sovereignty with uh, getting rid of the monarchy. We want to be uh, militarily neutral 
Uh, we want to be the Switzerland of the South Pacific. And um, don't get me wrong, we will still have a defence force. But we we are friends to everybody and enemies to no one. So why why force us to pick sides like all people with slant eyes and yellow skin are naughty, ugly people? Who who said that? Where's the evidence for that? Why is it that all of a sudden you have to choose sides when you should choose your own side? And and and, and if you're a true sovereign nation, why do you always apply it? Here's the other thing: five nation, five eyes. We've got five eyes over here solely because of um, where we are positioned on in the globe, and we we have a, a better vista of a whole range of things, um, satellite wise. We want out of that. We don't want anything to do with um, Canada, Australia, uh, the US, all, all the rest. You know, we, we just don't. And here's the other question: Why should we? Give me one example as to how it would advance Indigenous people, or not either Australia or in Aotearoa, to be a part of some military alliance uh, where we're all having to fund some some war amongst Slavic people on their own on their own whenua amongst one another. We're not going. We don't we don't agree with the war, but we're not prepared to go and support either side either. They're indigenous people fighting on their own lands. We made the mistake of lining up and fighting the Vietnamese on their own land, fighting the Afghanistanis on their own land, and the indigenous people went out. We either terminated them, and the Aussies had a bloody good go at uh, the indigenous peoples of Australia with, with some of the most barbarous rules I've ever seen in my life. Anyway, so that's um, that's the position of the party. Martin, we're, we're in a very strong position. There's a climate. There's the cost of militarism. There's a whole bunch of problems associated with the AUKUS deal. Are there other other issues you want to raise aside from this issue of sovereignty? Well, no, no, because you see, everything goes back to sovereignty. Um, all the other issues you've raised are sidebar to the real issue. And the real issue is why, why, who made the case for you joining AUKUS? Who made the case for dragging us with you? No one has. So, so all the others, all the other stuff, you know, the the outrageous cost. Why we're so going military neutrality is because we just want to look after our own economic zone. We don't want to invade anybody else's. We don't want to have a military that can make war on other continents elsewhere for other people's reasons. You know, we we just want to have a defence force that looks after our exclusive economic zone, and we're pretty happy with that. And, and if everyone was happy with that, what's the problem? Chinese actually buy things off us. They're our biggest trading partner. They've provided us with the, the best free trade agreement, even better than the Australian free trade agreement. The US and Great Britain refuse to enter into free trade agreements with little old Aotearoa. I mean, it's a disgrace. You know, they, want us, they want us to make war on the bloody people out of Moscow and Beijing because apparently London and Washington are better. What a load of crock. How much discussion is there in Aotearoa about New Zealand joining AUKUS? No, because... No, no, um, the less oxygen it's given uh, and the less informed your populations are, the easier it is for politicians to make decisions and... LR is a done deal. So over here, uh, the whole conversation around August, August has been extraordinarily low key. And is only and, and a number of our groups, which are deemed fringe, like indigenous, uh, who try and raise the discussion are squashed. Are you worried that it's that the, the one of the governments will try and uh, join? Oh no. If, if the, on the 14th of November, of October this year, if, the election goes the wrong way. There's no doubt this country will be joining in August. Aotearoa, New Zealand, is famous for its anti-nuclear policy from the 1980s. Also famous for staring down the wrath of the United States on this issue. Could you explain what does the AUKUS deal mean for this anti-nuclear policy? Well, it's a direct anathema. It, it, it's the biggest oxymoron you could possibly seize on uh, in, in, on both sides of the Tasman. How, how can we have uh, an anti-nuclear legislation, 1987. Um, we 
an, an act of war was conducted uh, against us by the French, for goodness sakes, when they blew up the Rainbow Warrior here. You know, this is the disgraceful type of conduct of these people. So, so we've we've suffered um, an act of war on our in our own territory, but not by a Russian, not by a Chinese. No, no, a dirty rotten froggy. So, and this is a matter of historical record and history, right? So, so to us, um, you you can't have your nuclear submarines here. Yeah. So we're quite happy that you can't come in, into our waters, right? Because it's in breach of our legislation. And you know what? With that legislation, our renewables sector is uh, close to eighty percent. Yeah. Because because there's a there's a quick and easy pullback for everybody nuclear power, right? Yeah. Thank God for that legislation, which forced us to think uh, to look at renewables. So these things aren't just about uh, warmongering and the waste of dollars. Uh, you know, you know? But these things are about the sense of travel of your whole nationhood and the way it looks, feels, and reflects itself. And so thank God for uh, uh, banning nuclear, uh, any nuclear. Um, uh, either arms or product uh, in New Zealand, uh, and then that just fired up our renewables sector, and we're in the top ten percent of renewables in the country, in the world, rather. So, so, so great things happen out of these decisions. Writing recently in Green Left, Matt Robson linked the anti-nuclear policy on the one hand as a distraction from the government's extreme neoliberal austerity imposed on the people of your country at the same time. In Australia, we've just had the budget where there are crumbs for people who are disadvantaged, but uh, billions of dollars for tax cuts for the rich, billions of dollars for nuclear submarines. Can you please talk about this link between neoliberal austerity on the one hand and militarism on the other? Well, um, the, the evidence that supports neoliberal economics is a bit like the emperor with no clothes. You know, the, um, our policy structure that was adopted uh, in the mid-80s to the mid-90s is now in grievous disrepair. Everyone knows it. Inequality, uh, over that period of neoliberal economics, uh, our country's wealth fell into the hands of 2% own 50% of our wealth. All happened in the last 35 years. And neoliberal economics isn't about um, rich folk getting rich because they're so clever and smart. It's because they're close to regulators and politicians that make the law that continue to egregiously advance their interests at the expense of the rest of the nation. So they socialise all their losses. They bank all their profits. Nothing changes. You know, they're a disgrace. And the, the more we can call that out, the better. And that's why Spati Māori's um, lay-down position is that we uh, are going to assert a wealth tax on these people. Because we want a fairer, more decent society, right? And and it's not it's not because we're envious of the rich. It's because too few have had too much to say over too much. That's what we're arresting, not not the envy of the rich, but the corruption that has grown through our body politic because of them. The drumbeats of war against China are beating ever louder. And surely this AUKUS pact is part of this push towards war on China. Can you explain what is what attitude should progressive people take to this push for war against China? Well, well I, I think we should take a history lesson first. Um, China built the Great Wall to keep people out and to host them in. Name, name one massive excursion out of China They've been attacked by Japan. They've been attacked by the French. They've been attacked by the, they've been attacked by virtually everyone. The Russians, for goodness sakes, you know the Mongols. Not in one time. Yeah. Oh, the Opium War with the English. See, with it, that just brings up all the drama with those poems. But let's park them up because the debate is about China. I, I, I there's no case to go against China at this particular point in time. Are through imperial expansionism. Now they'll come down here and do trade, right? And if it's, if it's a fair trade, and my eyes are open, I've got lawyers, I've got accountants, I've got economists, and we cut a deal that benefits both parties. That's a great deal. What's wrong with that? 
Why, what? And here's the thing, there's too much racism involved in this, you know? It's all, all about those dirty yellow people, again. I can't stand racism. And uh, I say to our people, you've suffered racism from here to eternity. Don't go and buy into that nonsense. Show me where's the evidence and where's the case to go uh, anti-China, anti-China, pro-America, pro-America. One will take all our goods without tariffs. One won't allow our goods in. And if they do, they'll tariff the hell out of them. I guess, I guess who's the tariff? Well, a a, a, a um, person that applies that. It's the Yanks, not the Chinese. Same with your products. Thank you very much for your time. That was John Tamahere from Te Pāti Māori, uh, the Māori Party in Aotearoa, New Zealand. As I said at the beginning, if you like the work that we do, please become a supporter of Green Eft. It makes a huge difference to the work they're able to do and it's the best way to receive the content that we produce. Also, you can support us on Patreon, but even without spending a cent, you can share this video or share the link to this Green Eft article. Every little bit helps and we do certainly appreciate your work. We have a world to win and people there as a way to do it. Thanks, see you next time. Thank you.